Street lights in Atlanta are placed too far apart. Dismal road flares of a time when young kings and queens walk these streets with more southern swag than young Jeezy or Ludacris could dream. This is the place we call home. A yellow brick road littered with bullet casings and irony. We used to play ball at the corner of Princeton and Columbia at. An ivy reminder of the battles we embrace every morning and the dreams. We may never have the chance to achieve. The things we valued then seem a lifetime away from the treasure chest under our bed that we value now are Jordans. Fastened to our souls like apocalyptic sandals, rooted in orange halos and weather rib moons that would eclipse the sun if we had room enough to rise. We left, we left the court like any other Friday. Exhausted, but still rooming up to shit talk about who got dumped on that day. 6 p.m. in College Park is like a curtain call to your favorite Greek tragedy. You don't have to go home, but you have to get the hell out of the shade. My mother used to tell me nothing good happens when the sun goes down. The five of us walked down Jackson Ave like we were bulletproof. Spartan warriors with the world in one hand and a Gatorade in the other, not a care or worry, more focused on the fatigue in our backs and the street that lay before us. There was something different about July 6, 1999. The wind seemed to be blowing in the wrong direction and the sun falling faster than usual. Everyone left, and it was just the two of us. I think I remember he said, your last jumper was whack. I think I told him his handles were trash. And before I could turn my head, the bullying end of a Glock 9mm was pressed firmly against his stomach. A shaky 18-year-old stood her arm's length away, balancing everything we knew in this world on the sweaty ends of his fingertips, sporting a teeth-cracking grin, wearing that red bandana like a blood-soaked crown we both froze. Twelve years old and not our first gunfight, but this one seemed a little different. Too much insecurity on his end and too much anger on ours. A pair of Jordan 6s and $10 seemed like a fair trade for another breath, maybe. But walking on bare feet, an empty hand that had a suffocating feel all of its own, his pride was heavy. The weight of all those beatings he took to be blessed in red pulled the titanium trigger like a slingshot. The bullet hit like ripples in the smallest pond in your backyard. A new meaning for this poem to hit home. A shattered coffee mug as you read the Sunday morning obituaries. When there's little to no chest left, a breath is a silent prayer spit over a heartbeat. The wisp of an exit wound leaving both our chests. Holding the cracked spot of a superhero feels like watching your father cry, maybe. Maybe we both died that day. Maybe I'll love a little less from now on. Maybe I'll never make another Blood Brothers pact worried it might end the same way that it started. I don't know. But I do know 12 years old, his middle school girlfriends, a high school prom, and four years of playing college basketball away from 22. Three kids, a wife, and a preschool graduation away from 30, and a lifetime away from 80. A flower fading before he could bloom was an understatement even as I say. He was a 12-year-old fireball of a soldier. The kind that only fights when he has to, a butterfly confined in the darkness between streetlights, a perforated edge on a police report, a phone call to a frantic mother, a reason to get up in the morning to tattoo, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me on my ribs, to run sprints at 6 a.m. because he would if he was breathing to put a ball through a poem. Shed tears in public because it's the least I could do for not shedding them then. How do you end a poem about the sudden death of your best friend? Standing in a room full of strangers, weightless and broken, praying on a mic, wishing you had a time machine or a voice that could break the sound barrier that you hadn't gone mute. That you hadn't gone mute the moment he took his last breath. I'm no longer silent, but I'm sorry it took 10 years. I love you. You are my inspiration. And all of this is for you. <laughs>